Hello, everybody, and welcome to the webinar tonight. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to pop the screen on there, and uh, hopefully a few people can see me. It's Richard Owen here from the British Association for Psychological Type. We've got 15 people currently present. Um, welcome to the Zoom platform as well, which we're using for tonight's webinar. And um, you may see at the bottom of your screen, you've got like a Q&A button. So what we can do is have a, um, a quick intro to just, just to see where people are from. We've got a, a welcome here from, uh, from Phil Kerr saying, good day from sunny Queensland. So welcome, Phil, and Australia there. We've got uh, Jean-Luc there. So I'll just introduce him in a minute. Jean-Luc, are you in Belgium right now? Yeah, I am. So welcome to you, Jean-Luc. We're going to have a Thank you so much. Yeah, welcome. We're going to have a, a good conversation tonight. We just had a really interesting little warm up there before the webinar. And um, we've got um, Jan from the Netherlands there. So if anyone else wants to say hi, it'll give us a sense of, of who's joined us from around the world. Uh, I'm here in London and you can see our Christmas tree in the background. I just thought I'd turn the lights down so you can see the beautiful lights there. We've got uh, Bertrand is joining us from Switzerland. Hello. Salut by Bertrand. And we've got, um, yeah, people from all over the world. That's the great thing about these webinars. Although this is the British Association for Psychological Type, where, you know, we welcome people from everywhere, um, including Joanna from Greece there as well. Um, and of course, just to give you an idea of who we are, the British Association for Psychological Type is a, is a membership organization uh, consisting of mainly practitioners of uh, those who use psychological type in their work that can be MBTI it can be other systems uh, any sort of Jungian psychological type work um, and also as besides professionals we've got those who are just interested and, and, and fans of, of type and, and, and use it in their own life as well so uh, the, the plan tonight is you can send in a few questions if you want as we go I'll take the questions and, and see if there, you know, there's any that, that will be good to ask uh, Sean Luke along the way, but I've got a few interesting ones to start him off with as well. So, Sean Luke, t tell us about about where you are and, and where you work and live. Okay, nice to nice. Uh, thank you so much, first uh, Richard, for inviting me. Uh, I'm a French-speaking Belgian, and I uh, spend half of my time in Belgium and half of my time in Montreal. Um, um, the, I have a company in Belgium which is called uh, Metamorphose, where we do uh, coaching and training and those kind of things. And then I have a company in Quebec we, whose name is uh, DNP. And there we offer uh, very, very interesting stuff, which are deep coaching sessions uh, using uh, MBTI, action type, uh, John BB's archetypes and those kinds of things. Mm, yeah, so you, you've got a, a base like geographically, you're in different places and you're using lots of different models in your work as well. Yeah, definitely. And uh, uh, being sometimes in Belgium, some of part of my time in France and some part of my time in Quebec, is, it's uh, learning me a lot of things about type differences and culture. Mm. And, and in the business, the company that you're, you're part of, Metamorphosis, is, is that what, what kind of work and, and clients do you work with? Well, most clients are private companies, can go from an SME to a very big corporation. Uh, we offer conventional MBTI and leadership training, but we also uh, do uh, um, aggressivity and violence management training with actors. That's a bit on the side of the business, but most of the business is about MBTI and leadership. Uh, but uh, for all our trainings, there will be a type uh, dimension because, I mean, conflict management, for example, I use the uh, Damien Killen model that I love. Uh, for feedback, I will talk about sensing and intuition, the way you give a feedback to your boss depending on sensing and intuition can be so different. So, uh, and of course, uh, thinking, feeling. So uh, there, there will be a type dimension in most of the, the, the work we do. And what kind of um, impacts uh, and outcomes do you get using psychological type in your work with leaders? Um, 
Uh, I used to say that uh, providing a leadership training is not about learning uh, tools. It's about learning about yourself. And so um, uh, having a type dimension help people understand that there is not a good way of doing things. So let, let me give you an example. Um, most people will tell you today that when you want to motivate someone, it's the why that, that matters. Well, I've seen cases with sensing people where simply the why is not the issue, it's the how. I mean, uh, I, I read it my, my website uh, two years ago and my, my daughter and my son helped me for some part of the work. And my daughter is an INFP, my son is an ISTP. I mean, I can't work with them the same way. With my NFP daughter, I will start from the broad strategy and go piece per piece to the, uh, to, to the real practical concrete stuff. But I will start first by discussing the strategy and we will end at some point of time to decide whether we put blue or green. With my son, I, I start from really very practical stuff. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the discussion, we come to a, a, a broader strategic view. If I mix the two, it's never going to work. So as far as I'm concerned, type is at the start of everything. Mm. So you can, yeah, in your family, you're noticing big differences in the way people approach things. And you yeah. distilled it quite nicely into that, that the why and the how, something more abstract and something yeah. more concrete and practical. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another example, uh, there, there was a book recently and they made a film out of it, Jack Reacher, Never Go Back. I read the book. It's a very interesting book with a lot of suspense, but I believe the guy that wrote that is a sensing guy. And I had to stop the book a couple of times because as an intuitive, it was so annoying to me. Although there is a lot of suspense in the book. So this book, I believe, was written by a sensing person and it was very difficult for me to go through it. It's a really good point because I do think yeah, in, in, when you're reading things, people write in such different styles. Yeah. And, and everyone knows that feeling when they read a book and it's just hard. It's hard yeah. going. They're like, yeah. I can't read this stuff. It's, it starts yeah. to, to give you a stre level of stress just, yeah. just trying to get through it. Yeah. And sometimes on television, you will hear someone talking. You say, okay, I mean, that's, I hear introverted thinking or I hear the extroverted feeling or whatever. So, and having people in the training understand this, um, transform an unconscious process into a conscious one is the key to uh, to to become a better leader or to, to communicate better so that's one of the, the, the key things you do with leaders then yeah yeah great so that's some of the work that you do and um what about other systems besides psychological type? Um, you're talking about the aggression work and things like that. So what role does all that play in, in what you do? Um, in terms of aggression, we don't work much with type mm. because it's really, uh, you know, type is more about the cortical part of our processes and aggression is more about so-called limbic and reptilian brain. So there won't be much type into aggression, but all the other type of trainings we do, whether it's time management, conflict management, uh, uh, giving feedback, delegating, uh, and so on and so on, there will be a type dimension. And especially for coaching, mm. especially for coaching, because type is, offers such a rich insight into the type of questions. I was once in a, in a communication training and there was a lady, she was complaining about a colleague and I told her, what does it touch inside you? What, 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 what do you feel about that? And she had a very hard time giving me an answer. And uh, it took me a couple of minutes to figure out that I was just asking a question which is perfectly suited for an INFP like me. And she was not an INFP. So basically, I had to find a different question. Okay. And so the way you handle a, a coaching session, the way, the type of question you ask, 
uh, it's so different. So that that's the issue I have with the conventional um, international coaching federation way of providing coaching that was developed for SJs, ISTJs, mm. ESTJs, and those type of people. Mm. They don't make up one hundred percent of the population. So yes, that's something you were talking about earlier, wasn't it? That you're adapting your coaching for different types. Yeah. Uh, and so is there a, a sort of general way you'd break down different styles of coaching? What's the overall theory for that? Well, the first thing we will, well, the, um, uh, the, the starting point for what, what we do, uh, when we do a deep coaching uh, session, we will start by explaining a bit what the MBTI is. Then we will uh, help the person through the action type approach to uh, to guess what uh, his or her personality profile is, and then we will explain to the person uh, his or her type dynamics. Then we will explain uh, the BB archetypes, and then uh, the action type model offers uh, a very rich insight through the deep motivations. And so we will. That's the process I like to follow discovery of MTI, uh, a first overview of what your profile might be, and then we go to the dynamics, the archetypes, and then the deep motivations, mm -hmm. and it can be very interesting. Um, it was back in beginning of November, I was in Montreal, and I had a, a French lady, very, very nice person. She said to me, I'm an ISFJ. And so I tested her with the uh, action type approach and I found her that she would be an INFP, which is not exactly the same kind. And um, so I started to ask her questions and questions and questions. And suddenly I said, I want to test something with you. And basically uh, this lady is 40 year, 41 years old. She is definitely an INFP. But to survive in her family, she acted as an ISFJ for 36 years. And it's only since two, three years that she has started to understand she's an INFP. But the way she has raised her children, um, she has a difficulty with that. Because as, some, as it may happen with SFJs, uh, the way she raised her children and they have a tendency to be a bit dependent because extroverted feeling, I want to make you happy. But that's a fifth function of an INFP. So she hates that as an INFP. So she has raised her children in a way that she can't stand now. And us INFP are very kind people, but when we get mad, we can get very mad because T is our inferior function. And so she said to me, I'm scared of what I'm becoming. And I said, you're just becoming what you are. So that was, I mean, that's, that's a gift of life to, to live that with people, to see them evolve and, and have this kind of sharing. It was very, I think for her, it was a very important moment. And for me, I said to myself, I do the, the most beautiful work in, that, that you can find. Mm, that's a really powerful story because it, it's it's something that a lot of us experience where we meet people who have been adapting themselves to their family or culture yeah. so much for a long time and yeah. i mean sometimes we see that you know the impact that that has on people's mental health you know that it's it's a huge it's a huge thing for people and then you know so this is a question from saline that came in here it says you know, how long do you think it takes from starting to understand type to being able to adapt one's behavior so how, how quickly you know from from learning about herself through type for instance your how long did it take your client to to then adapt and and, and find her way of who she really was in life a lifetime mm. <laughs> no i mean um I once followed an organizational development training and it was a, a very nice guy he was a scottish guy Walt Hopkins. And Walt told us, never try to change yourself. Just try to catch yourself earlier. And I think he had a point. I mean, we have got our 
natural preferences with that there are some part of learning and habits and so on but if it's just learning to become self-conscious and um, it can go relatively fast can go relatively fast mm. but changing yourself is i don't believe you can change yourself mm. but you can catch yourself earlier and that that can be quite fast i mean now, having said that, it's like uh, an onion, you know, when, when you peel an onion, there are, will be different layers. And uh, when I think about what I've discovered about myself, it's just about layers. And I've just, what, six months ago, found new layers about who I am and what I need to develop. And probably there are different layers that I haven't discovered yet. That's why I say it's a lifetime job. Yeah, it's a big thing. Yeah, you're right. I mean, obviously, development. Yeah, it's a lifetime journey. So, um, next thing to talk about, I think, is 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 the action type. So, we're about halfway through today's webinar, and you've already mentioned some about your process of working with people using different models. Um, you know, those with the MBTI, the type dynamics, um, using an eight function model, using the function attitudes, as they're sometimes called, or cognitive processes to understand how we've all got each of these eight different aspects to ourselves and what is the dynamic between them in, in yourself. Um, then you've got, you know, the, the BB's archetypes, which again is one of my special um, specialities, I suppose as well. Um, you know, understanding the, these subtle characteristic roles that the functions that actually engage the world with. And then the, less, the, the other one which is something I'm not familiar with is the action type. You, you mentioned first that it's, it's linked to this idea of deep motivations. Can you explain a bit more about deep motivations and how that works? Okay, well maybe I'll start first with action type. So action type, yeah. uh, it's action type approach. And it, was, uh, it has been developed uh, for the last 25 years around by uh, two very nice gentlemen, Bertrand Terola and Ralph Hippolyte. Bertrand is a Swiss guy. He, he used to uh, train uh, coach uh, trainers, uh, sport coaches, excuse me, um, uh, for the Swiss uh, Olympic Federation. And Ralph uh, was a professional uh, sport coach. He, he used to coach the feminine a team in volleyball that went to the Olympics. And uh, they have discovered some links in between the way people move, uh, walk, uh, between posture and their personality profile. And uh, they went back to what Ben Ziger said, and there was a French lady and a Belgian lady that make different analyses on posture and the way you walk. And over the f last 25 years, they've uh, gained a very huge experience and and done uh, very interesting uh, correlations and so there is a testing protocol and then when you test someone with uh, his posture his way of moving you can define his personality profile to give you an example last year in montreal in 2016 i met a professional baseball player and uh, the guy is 23 years old, very bright, very good. Uh, but his carry was going down for the last 18 months, had been going down for the last 18 months. And so I tested the guy, he was an ISFJ. And I explained him the way ISFJ should draw a ball. And basically, it's simply that they need to have their right and left uh, arm close to the body because S, Fs have a close kind of uh, movement. And when I just explained that to the guy, he told me, my coach, we have a new coach for, we have got a new coach for the last 18 months, and he wants me to throw the ball with the, the arms far from the body, like ST people do. And the coach was just destroying the career of his, his player. So that's, uh, I discovered action type in the uh, Copenhagen conference uh, more than 10 years ago. Dick Otter made the presentation at that time. And then I, I had the opportunity to, to meet Bertrand. And I was then probably 47, 48 years old, uh, convinced since I was 13 years old that I was simply bad at sport, especially when you need to have hand-high coordination. 
and in two minutes time Bertrand helped me to un helped me to understand that simply as an NF I had been trained by uh, my teachers to throw a ball like an ST shoot so it's not that I'm not gifted it's just that I've been uh, I've been spoiled and so um, my son is a professional race driver and then we went to see Ralph and Bertrand and right now uh, he's doing very well uh, for this second appearance at national level uh, without um, a uh, tire failure he would have been on the podium and uh, action time has been instrumental to this success and so recently uh, Ralph has discovered deep motivations and if you want the difference between a preference and deep motivation a deep motivation uh, preference is when you're confronted with an information or something happens it's the preferred way of your brain to select one of the functions to handle the information so it will have an influence on the way you behave, the way you act, the way you communicate. A deep motivation a bit just before that, just the way you intend to act. And so back in May in Brussels, I had a guy, he's an INTP, but one of his deep motivation is called external relation, which is the equivalent of extroverted feeling. And so the guy always wanted to show his affection, but could not stand it because it would become emotional. And extroverted his feeling is this introverted function. And so the guy had really a tough time holding a girlfriend because every time he would show affection and say, come into my arms, that would be followed by something like you're getting fat or something like this. And so wow. <laughs> obviously the lady wouldn't like it. And um, when you compare the deep motivations uh, with the uh, eight function and the archetypes of BB, uh, I can come to fascinating conclusions. It's really, um, it has opened for me a broader view of what type is and uh, given me the impression that um, there is still so much more to know and to understand. Yeah, so that's really interesting. The deeper motivations are another side to yeah. having a preference for a particular function attitude and yeah. what that function attitude is trying to achieve in the world, so to speak, you know, yeah. in, in, its, in the way that it works. So um, then you've got the phys this physical, very physical side of observing people, reading type preferences and motivations from... Yeah the way they work, uh, the way they move. So can you give us some other examples of how people with different type preferences might move? Well, um, very interesting. For um, <laughs> Sometime I will spend a day uh, on, uh, on the wellness, you know, close to Montreal, there was a very, very nice wellness. And uh, I'm there in the hot tub and I spend half of my day watching people walking. <laughs> and it's, I can't resist that to say to my wife, look at this one, he's an intuitive. Look at this one, he's a sensing. So it's a kind of game we have. But uh, intuitive um, have what we call walking by the top. So they have a tendency to, uh, to put the, the, a part of the body to the front so that they follow the disequilibrium and they follow the center of gravity. And uh, also they have a tendency um, to, it's easier for them to see what happens on the top side of their view, uh, side of view. And so they tend to stumble much more. So when someone, for example, wants to see whether he's sensing intuition, that's something I'm going to look at. Well, the person has a tendency to stumble like I do every day uh, and the uh, and the uh, while sensing uh, have a tendency to put their weight uh, to the back, uh, push on their feet, and so they are much more stable. Uh, the example I always take is uh, Lewis Hamilton. Uh, Lewis Hamilton, if you have the chance to see him walking, you see it's totally different than uh, than uh, than. Um, I think Theresa May, I saw Theresa May yesterday on television and I know that some people consider it maybe to be a sensing judging, but the way she was walking yesterday, she put so much of her body to the front 
uh, that uh, she had really a walking by the top yesterday. That's really interesting. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're getting into Brexit means Brexit, and yeah. <laughs> walking from the top means in- intuitive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And Juncker was walking uh, just a cider, and the way Juncker was walking was really totally different. Mm. And and I had one of my participants recently, uh, he showed me a video of uh, Mr. Trudeau, uh, the uh, Prime Minister of Canada, uh, making handshake with Trump. And it was really interesting to see the way he turned the, the end of, uh, of Trump. Trump is vertical. And... Uh, by turning his, he, he put one of his hand to the to the arm of Trump so that Trump wouldn't be able to move his arm, and then he turned the end of the guy. And if I would have to make a handshake with Trump, that's what I would do. Mm-hmm. And so, what do you read in Trump's uh, movement about his type potentially? Uh, definitely a vertical, and I believe he must be an ESTP. Uh, having said that. Uh, and uh, you, you probably don't know the book about the different level of psychological development that uh, we have the chance to, to see uh, at the BAPT conference. I believe it must be level one. So <laughs> there is more to type than, uh, than just the, the preference of the guy. I think you're talking about uh, Angelina Bennett's yeah, ego development. Angelina, yeah. the, the talk, I love yeah. her work and, uh, and I mean, I would be interested to have a feeling about that, but uh, my guess would be there's is level one. So, I mean, as, as much as I mean, it's a lot of fun trying. You know, people enjoy t- trying to type celebrities and pol- political figures, yeah. and but I suppose the real you know evidence for this stuff comes from working with people and then actually seeing how it correlates with the results of other assessments, right? Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a scientist, I'm a practical guy, and um, as an INFP, my tertiary function is introverted sensing, so I'm not the king of statistics. But my take since the beginning of this year uh, is that I must have five or six cases uh, where I tested someone, and on one of the variables, uh, I came to conclusions that did not exactly match what I saw through the testing. And sometimes probably the mistake was because the person moved in a way that I didn't see. So my guess is that the, real, the reliability I'm, I'm getting to must be around 90, 95% with the action type physical testing. It's, I mean, it's so much better what you get with type indicators. And I suppose that Harf and Bertrand doing that since 20, 25 years must probably be much higher than what I do, but uh, it's really interesting. And so sometimes I will talk a bit about type in a, in a training session and someone will say, oh, do you want to test me? And I mean, it takes five minutes. And then what I do after that, I will explain them uh, the consequences of their dominant, their auxiliary, the tertiary, the inferior, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and so on function, and use that as a, as a kind of uh, checking whether probably uh, uh, also the interaction style, the temperaments. And so I use those type of questions. And uh, I read with a lot of pleasure Susan's book about uh, finding the fit. Uh, and I get a, such high reliability, such a high reliability. So when we got a little question coming in here, short one from Claire Ayres, who said, what do you actually do to, in this testing process uh, with people? Is it just observation? Um, you, can, you can observe, for example, players on the field. But I don't do that much because not being a sporter, I I don't feel so confident about that. But what I do is first I will uh, test sensing and intuition by uh, um, putting them with their body to the front or to the back. And and the the basic idea is when you are in your good posture, your good mobility, uh, I will accept pressure on you. You've got to resist to this pressure. And if it's your good posture, your good motricity, you will be able to stand more and more and more, okay? If it's not, I push a little, even if you are a strong person and you won't be able to, to resist. So I will exert uh, an increasing pressure and see whether people can 
um, let's say, activate her body to resist to the pressure I'm, 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 I'm exerting. And so I will test sensing and intuition first by the posture, then I will test feeling and thinking. Uh, then uh, there is another test with the way you look uh, with uh, thinking and feeling. Then there is a motricity test. And then I will uh, do another test, which is called um, 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 associated, disassociated. And then we'll test the verticality, horizontality. It's, became, it's becoming a bit technical, but let's say I do what? Around eight to 10 tests. Uh, some of them are redundant. It's just to make sure that uh, I did measure the, the right thing. I've, at the end of the first series of tests, I've got the good indication whether the person is sensing or intuition, thinking or feeling. And then the last series of tests is to see whether the person is extroverted or introverted, and then judging or perceiving. Once this is done, then I will go through the third, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and so on, and say, well, this type of person, do you recognize in yourself this type of functioning? And uh, I don't like to do one of the two without the other. I like to do the action type and then do the cognitive cross-check. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you've got yeah, quite a, a, a long battery of different assessments yeah. to do. Where, and you can but it, it can be very fast, you know, in, let's say, five, ten minutes, you can do a good testing. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, I will do the deep motivation test. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really fascinating stuff. I wish oh, we yeah. could talk about this a lot longer, but I'm conscious that we've kind of gone over our half an hour that we for the webinar. And um, I think it's good to leave it so that people are wanting a bit more. And there's one place that can happen is the BAPT conference, yeah. right? This, this uh, coming April in uh, Milton Keynes, we've got a, a new venue for the BAPT conference this year. Uh, you can find out more about that on BAPT.org.uk, the website um, and uh, the dates for the conference this year. If I can just get back out of here, um, just to remind us of the date. So the 12th to the 14th of April, 2018. What can we expect from your presentation at the conference, Jean-Luc? Um, I will give a short uh, intro to uh, um, the different links between posture or motricity and, 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 uh, and preferences. Uh, there will be a demo, maybe it will be videotaped or maybe I will see what, what happens. And I would like to uh, present a few cases. Uh, I'm, I haven't figured out yet totally what I want to do, but maybe I could do uh, uh, one or two examples of cases I had explaining what I, this is the type, this is the dynamics, people know that. Those are the archetypes, those are the deep motivations. And then have people figure out what it could have as an, as an impact because what I would, what I hope after the the conference is that uh, people are more sensitive to the deep motivations. Mm. Yes, that's so quite that's really. Well, the the physical testing is something very important that action type brought, but the deep motivation is really a, a big step forward. Great. I think this is going to be a really fascinating conference talk. Um, it's, it's going to be like yourself and. and just over 20 other presenters at the conference as well. Um, I know you're doing one of the keynote talks, so it's, it's, I really look forward to hearing and seeing the videos as well. That sounds really interesting. Yeah. If, you, if you can actually, you know, to, to notice the, the differences in movement for ourselves, I'm sure will be quite fascinating. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately, we've kind of run out of time now. And I, I know that um, we had one last question there. It says, from Claire again, says, where, where can we learn to do this? So about with action type, where, where do people get more information about that? Uh, action type, and I think it's a dot com. I'm not sure, but if you type action type, uh, you should, uh, on the first page of Google, find the, the website of Bertrand and Ralph, uh, actiontype.com. I think it's a dot com. I'm not sure, but I think it's fascinating right well, so thank you so much and um you're very welcome it's been a really interesting talk i'm going to just quickly share a, a last slide as well about our next webinars coming up we've got um a three more remaining before the conference and uh if i can just share the screen here we go
So hopefully everyone can see this now. Um, there we go. We've got, if you go to BAPT.org.uk uh, slash events, we've got uh, 16th of January, and we've got Jane Kesey, who is from the USA, going to be giving another fascinating talk. She's another keynote speaker from the BAT conference. Uh, we've got John Haxton of OPP, the, uh, the company that uh, owns the licensing for MBTI in the UK. And he is the head of thought leadership. Um, has a, a, a real grounding in research um, and, and writes fascinating articles about that. So I'm really looking forward to, to hearing him as well. Dario Nardi, of course, um, another great um, international expert on type who's going to be at the conference. And he's, uh, again, sh sharing more about his work with uh, EEG brain scanning, neuroscience work, and the links with psychological type. So there, more fascinating talks coming up. They're free. Do join us. Um, but for now, have a, have a wonderful Christmas, everybody. And I, I really hope that um, you ha have a great holiday and we, we'll see you again in the new year. And thank you, Jean-Luc, once more. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. See you later, guys. Bye.